G'day folks. Uh, it's time for a little uh, sort of midweek update. I can't be bothered doing much else. It's uh, just one of those uh, days the weather's just been grinding me down unfortunately. I've got a nice shiny new project out there to play with and it's raining and it has been for the last two days. I did make a start on it. You can see some of the exhaust manifold on the floor down there. Um, also did a uh, TV repair. I repaired that plasma that's up on the wall there. Um, yeah, blowing Y sustain. I also bought the Y buffers with the board second hand and put them both in and it didn't work. So I'm thinking, hmm, why is that resistor and one of the Y buffer chips getting really hot? So I pulled it out and put, took a chance and put my old buffers back in because I've always heard that buffers often take out the sustain. Put my old buffers back in with the replacement um, Y sustain board and it worked. So I got a do dodgy set of buffers out of it, but at least I got a good sustain board. I'll talk to the seller, they do have a DOA um, return policy on it, so I'll just send it back to them. Hopefully they log the serial numbers of everything they send out and there won't be any questions about them, because, well, if you don't log serial numbers on boards that you send out, the customer will just send you the dodgy one back, and that's kind of silly. So, yeah, if you do sell printed circuit boards for, well, replacement TVs and things like that, it's always wise to log the boards, um, the serial numbers, and the um, even mark them use some UV dye mark or something but yeah anyway that's the uh, well that's not the problem with the car that I've got um, I haven't even introduced her yet her name's Vicky if you've seen iRobot you know what I'm talking about iRobot's a really cool movie a Bruce Willis movie and yes a couple of you guessed right and I did actually reveal it on uh, face not Facebook <laughs> Google Plus Yes, I did buy a Escape, uh, $1,500, found her on Gumtree, and uh, yeah, apart from the engine issue, she's a real gem. Very clean, tons of new parts, 12-month-old auto trans, uh, two-month-old wheels and tyres, um, numerous other bits and pieces fitted, recently serviced, and recently giving a, I think it's all uh, overfueling and resulting in the destruction of the catalytic converters. The mid one is in the in the rear muffler and resonator now. It's gut. It's just broken up. And the um, two that come down the cylinder banks, each cylinder manifold has a built-in cat. They're starting to come apart too. One of them's still there, but it's blocked. The other one's just in pieces. So tonight's little jobby will be uh, rotting out the remains, which won't be easy on the front one because it's got a big elbow in the bottom, a right angle. So I'm going to have to cut an inspect a service window in the cat itself at the bottom do all the work and then carefully TIG weld a patch over it which is quite easy for me because I'm a seasoned TIG welder but certainly not easy for someone at home who doesn't have a TIG but yeah she's a, a real gem straight smooth shiny no I could probably count all the noticeable dents on my one hand like she's really well cared for roof rails weather guards hood guard um, nose stone chip guard uh, good uh, new CSA mags, new brake pads, um, Goodyear Wrangler HP extra load tyres, uh, 900 kilos a corner. Uh, at 50 psi you can run them at higher pressures, for, particularly for towing in the rear, that's really handy. Just a couple of little paint chips but no dents. I don't know why there's a, um, a bath logo on there, that doesn't make any sense. I guess it was an auto parts store thing. Yeah, hitch, removable hitch. Oh, my knees are going to get wet, but that's the mid body resonator that's sort of half hanging down. And it rattles because all the bits of that cat are now in there and in the rear muffler, causing serious restriction. But there's also a big overfueling problem that's resulted in the death of these catalytic converters. Basically, meltdown. It's like a reactor core, it just starts glowing and dies. A horrible death. Interior is not bad. I do mind. I do prefer the feel of the Rav4's interior and the um, five-speed manual. Uh, this one's a column auto, which is a bit quirky these days. I mean, there's a park brake down there. There's no real reason why they couldn't have used a T-bar, but I believe the Mazda Tribute also has the same. And for those who didn't know, the Ford Escape and the first-generation Ford Escape and the first-generation Mazda Tribute are genetically the same. Or mechanically, I should say. Um, 
they're just cosmetically different. Ford put their own trim and everything on the body style, but the platform is exactly the same. Same with the drivetrain, powertrain, all that stuff. Um, Ford, I believe the Mazda Tribute also uses the 3 litre Duratec V6 that's in this one. And uh, yeah, they're not a bad little package. Haven't driven one before. I've driven one, this one into the backyard after it got off the tow truck, that's about it. But apparently they go alright. 200, 201 horsepower. And uh, since the old Ford Fairmont's getting a bit long in the tooth and the cylinder head uh, weeping, coolant weeping is uh, getting a bit worse, I decided it's a good time to look at a replacement. And this will probably do it. Uh, the only drawback with this engine is it doesn't have the low down torque that the Ford 4 litre straight 6 does. Um, this, that thing, the Ford 4 litre straight 6 will pull anything straight off idle, whereas this one you have to rev it a bit. Again, not a big deal. It does have a nice head unit in it, but it's got a quirky display panel on it. The image is off centre by about half an inch. The overlay for the touch screen is on centre, so you, you're not actually touching the thing you think you're touching. And that's when it wants to work, so I'm guessing a couple of hot summer days have actually cooked the uh, ribbon that goes to the panel or the display driver itself. Uh, overly complicated electronics like this and very hot Aussie summer days don't get along very well. That's why I get a lot of uh, LCD TVs with cooked edge ribbons and control boards and things like that and plasma TVs that probably last twice as long in a really cold country. They can't handle the heat, they just pop. So yeah, I'm not going to start up yet. I'll do that tomorrow during the day because it's going to be loud. And yes, I will do a video of it. There's the outlet from the front cat and you can see there's a, well, you can't see, but there's a right angle pipe. And yeah, the rear one's facing straight down. I can see up inside it. One little bump on the nose. A couple of clips are broken, but that's about it. I can fix all of that. Again, clean, smooth, nothing wrong with that nose. Engine wise, yeah, standard Duratec 30 I believe it is. Um, water pump driven off the cam at the back which is fairly accessible right next to the thermostat housing. Tensioner, um, the serpentine belts run tensioners which is really nice. They're not over-tensioned and uh, destroying alternator and accessory bearings really quick. Got to pull the inlet plenum off to check all the coil unplugs and the spark plugs and everything at the back. So I've got a new set of plenum gaskets coming in. The owner redid them but I can see Blue Max there so I'm guessing he might have reused the old ones. Um, he did a good job. He did ad admirably well to get this far into it. Again he replaced some sensors and things. I think he's done the math meter and whatever that is there. The throttle body is definitely old. But yeah, it's just going to be a process of elimination. I'm just going to strip everything off the top of the engine, uh, barring the rocker covers and all that sort of stuff, the cam covers, and just go from compression test up to spark test, up to reseal everything, replace all the vacuum hoses, because vacuum causes a problem on these. I'm going to pull the PCM out of the firewall there and open it up because these have an issue of blowing fuel injection control uh, switching transistors, the ones that fire the injectors or fire the coils are known for uh, burning out visibly. They just get all charred and blown. So I'll quickly pop the top off that and see if I can find anything noticeably burnt. I'm hoping that's a PCM and not just a firewall penetration for cable. It might just be a cable penetration, I don't know. Um, yeah fuel pump relays in there so I've got to pull that before I do too much after pulling the battery new battery um, yeah tons of new stuff all new coil unplug packs uh, but definitely a misfire with the exhaust on anyway with the old crappy melted down exhaust it was not a happy little chappy not at all so yeah definitely a solid miss after startup like directly after startup so I'm betting maybe one of the new coil unplugs is dead or there's a more serious issue maybe a dead injector or something like that but yeah, it's just gonna be process of elimination she's only done 200,000 K's so got a bit of life left hmm 
Yeah, same deal. Got sideboards. All four. Yeah, the tyres, you can just see the outline of the little uh, hairs on the tread blocks, so they've only seen very, very limited use. I think Blue's new front tyres have more miles on them, which is good. First time I bought a car which actually had good tyres on it. I haven't had to replace them. Only, ever only time I ever got new tyres on a car that I've bought is either they're um, ultra cheap and really nasty, or, um, well, I think that's the only way I got them. Betty came with fairly new tyres, but they were super cheap, like $90 SUV tyres, and they were horrible. Horrible. So I've gotten sold two of them, and I'm using the other two as spares. That's about all they're good for. But no, this thing's a real gem, and the owner was really uh, interested in what I do. I explained what I do, and that I'm going to try my best to do some videos on fixing it up, as long as the weather holds out. Uh, we are headed into winter. But no, the owner's really cool, so... Um, spent a bit of time chatting with him and working out how to pay for it because I bought it on a Sunday and of course you can't just walk into the bank and pull out 1500 bucks so I ended up they ended up just letting me go home and pay the pay the 500 bucks through PayPal afterwards which is really good to find someone who actually trusts another fellow human being you don't often find that these days and I really admire that so yeah I hope he's watching and uh, learning and like I said before anytime you need help with something just Hit me up with a question, particularly tech stuff. I'm more than happy to return the favour. So, yeah, that's today's little thing. And uh, thanks for watching. You've just met, met uh, Vicky. And that is the combining pipe rear bank, front bank. And, yeah... Yeah, a bit of debris fell out of that, but most of it's gone through the rear cat and into the rear muffler and everything like that. So I'm going to try and uh, crawl under underneath with a uh, cordless drill and a masonry bit and knock out the rest of that ceramic that's starting to fall apart. Keep the vacuum handy too. Apparently this stuff's pretty nasty. It's coated in platinum, which is a fairly precious metal, but again... They only companies only like buying whole cats. I don't know about buying uh, scrap material out of cats. I'm not too fussed anyway. I'll just chuck it in the bin. It's not worth my time trying to collect minuscule amounts of metal. Oh well. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll also make time when it's pissing with rain or freezing cold outside. I'll come back in here and finish the uh, 3SGE autopsy. I'll get that out of here.